Welcome to Late Night Liturgy. We are the Nine Beats Collective. So good to see you all. We, you are all are joining us on a recording that we're doing uh, for uh, Red Letter Christians. And uh, so join us. Uh, this first movement, I, I, I kind of think about uh, performance in, in movements. And so this one is grounding. Breathe with me. On the count of three, we're going to take a deep breath in together. One, two, three, deep breath in. Now. Deep breath in. And out. Deep breath in and hold it. Slowly out. Find a good rhythm of your breathing. So good to breathe together. We tune our hearts to our own presence. We tune our hearts to each other's presence. We tune our hearts to the presence of God. This is an invitation to intimacy. I pray an invitation to clarity. We got the opportunity to be free, own our liberation, own our personhood, own this moment now. So we are, we are the Nine Beats Collective, an international group of musicians and Christian thought leaders and activists and educators. We gathered about 2015 um, to discuss and create around the Beatitudes. Uh, this has led to, to two albums, a, a curriculum, several tour dates, and our second visit to Wild Goose. Yes. yes. So I, I just want to offer this invitation for us to all just be together, to own our stuff together. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I want to call us to our deeper selves by saying this, we are ancient, we are sacred, and we stand up within ourselves, all right? We are ancient, we are sacred, and we stand up within ourselves. We are wider, we are stronger, we are deeper than we've been told. We are wiser, we are smarter, we're bold enough to hold all the truth we've been given to ensure the liberation of ours and every soul. Deeper than sea floors, cradling shipwrecks life have given us to learn every lesson which hollows us out to a sage wisdom can fill us to overflowing, spilling forth to saturate the cracked parched soil of apathy and ignorance in the hope that heaven sprouts forth fruit for the dissonant, the innocent, the constrained, creating the platform to proclaim our long held magnificence. We stand up within ourselves. We are ancient, we are sacred, and we stand up within ourselves. We are wider, we are stronger, we are deeper than we've been told, we are wiser, we are smarter, and we're bold enough to hold that we are better than we've been led to believe. The chosen children of Israel seed, we are raised arrayed in a cloak of infinite possibilities, held secure by the belt of Orion, draped with the cape of constellations, crowned with the cosmos that won't stop, can't stop with sounds with every footfall we land as we walk the path of promise. You are the pathway home. You are the light at the end of the tunnel. Hell's greatest fear is the one who comes clear to the clarity of consciousness, who climbs the precarious summits of the highest identity. We choose to stand up within ourselves. We are ancient, we are sacred, and we stand up within ourselves. We are wider, we are stronger, we are deeper than we've been told. We are wiser, we are smarter, and we're bold enough to hold a stiff arm resistance when they try to convince us otherwise, no longer hypnotized by the persistent lies of the lower, a lesser than of you. Steady by what's true, climbing the sure steps of our inherent dignity and towering above the pools of pettiness that drowns any sense of civility in our day. Surveilling the ground you covered to get to this strong and solid state. You deep breath sigh in the knowing of what you once were and the now you are now embracing. Lights are on, curtains open, stage is set, take your place. We choose to stand up within ourselves. We are ancient, we are sacred, 
and we stand up within ourselves. We are ancient, we are sacred, and we stand up within ourselves. We are ancient, we are sacred, and we stand up within ourselves. And let me blow. To a different rhythm A change coming from afar A tribe of people gently singing Nine beats to the bar Nine beats to the bar Nine beats to the bar Hey, stop and listen Gently sing Nine beats to the bar Nine beats to the bar Nine beats to the bar Your slick, sick politics Dividing by skin and butter prints Throw the mud and then it sticks You see through your tricks Leading your domain teacher saw the crowd, he went up on the mountain and sat down and began to teach and he said, blessed are the poor, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger for justice, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemaker, the persecuted, and blessed are you. These beatitudes, these nine beats or blessings were spoken in a time of great turbulent unrest. When Palestine was under Roman occupation and the local Jewish population was sharply divided about how to respond to the empire's domination in their lives. The wealthy ruling minority colluded with the oppressor. The, the majority made up the, uh, of the, the peasants and working people sought liberation by strictly following all the laws and traditions while the zealot or the freedom fighters tried to instigate change through violent uprising. Sound familiar? Mm. It was a time not unlike our own. Family, the sounds and, 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 and the whispers of haunting are all around us. Mm -hmm. Conflict raging between groups and nations, the gap widening between the rich and the poor, people isolated, fragmented, dislocated, left out or left behind, and due to our own actions, our planet is being threatened right now. Family, if we are not disturbed, we ain't paying attention. The time has come for us to stand up within ourselves to own a deeper awareness. Think about this with me. What events in our world are in our lives are haunting and disturbing you? 
What events in your world or in your life are conspiring to wake you up to the whispers of another world? This ain't the way it's supposed to be. January 6th, that wasn't supposed to happen. That ain't the way it was supposed to be. And I'm wondering, I'm really wondering who really benefited from 20 years of war besides the industrial military complex. Yeah. This ain't the way it's supposed to be. What is it for you? What's waking you up? And I'm not, not, this is not a rhetorical question, like for real. What, what, no. Speak to me. What, what, what's waking you up to the possibility of another world? Speak to me. Mm. Younger generation. A younger generation, yeah. Yeah. What else is suggesting that there's another world for you? Yeah. My students. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. What else? Yes, yes. Yeah. Right? We found some things. George we lo Floyd. George Floyd, yes. Yes. Brianna, Brianna say their names. Yes. Yes. What if, what if the nine beats contained the keys to our liberation? These ancient sayings spoken by Jesus, what if it is a non-statement manifesto of a new way of showing up in our world? And, and it was right there, hidden in, in plain sight, absolutely ignored, particularly from those who actually called themselves followers. The nine beats offer a radical alternative to the broken system we've created. In them, we hear the whispers of another world. The nine beats name the illusions and false beliefs that have kept us chained and imprisoned. The system is broken. And I hate to tell y'all, we the system. We've learned to live from a mentality of scarcity and greed, but what if this is a world of abundance? We've learned to live as is, that all there is is despair, but what if there was more peace than we suspect? We've learned to live by striving, competing, and comparing, but what if we are all beings of infinite wisdom and inherent dignity? Mm. Mm. The Beatitudes points us towards what is real, and what is true, we are not helpless. We have the power to seek justice and to do good. Where mercy triumphs over judgment, we can stop hiding and pretending and just flat out be honest. Can we be real? Can we be real? The Beatitudes invite us to a new way of being, a new way of showing up in our world to be co-creators with and within love itself. Imagine, imagine, what could love create? Mm -hmm.
to exile. I've been given a lot of thought about this idea of exile. It's part of my story. Yep, y'all remember uh, uh, photo albums, right? You remember back in the day, we had photo albums, you know, now that we got our phones and we don't have much use of them. I, I can imagine someday that I'm gonna be taking my granddaughter, I don't have a granddaughter now, but I'm just like putting that in the universe. Someday I'm gonna take my granddaughter to this museum and she's gonna be like, granddaddy, and I'm gonna say yes, Tatiana. I've already figured that out. <laughs> That's oh, her name. That's beautiful. Th thank you, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> just put that out there. Just put that out there. Someday, and she's gonna, little Tatiana's gonna say, Granddad, what, what's that? I'm gonna say, you know, a long time ago, we had these things called books. <laughs> and, and, and this is a book that's a photo album, and, and, and it contains these things that we used to be called photos, and, and they had this little, little uh, clear covering over them to protect them, and we pulled them out when we had family together, and we started telling family stories, right? Family stories are important. You know, the good and the bad, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, let's let's be let's call it real. You know, it's like, well, who is that? Well, that's your uncle Silas. He climbed climbed Mount Everest in 1930. You know, and you're like, wow, <laughs> that's in me. Mm. Well, who is that? Well, that's your cousin Bubba. He was a town streak. You know, he just. <laughs> <laughs> He just ran around naked. That's what he did. <laughs> and, and you're like, wow, that, that, that's in me. You know? That's in me. Yeah, yeah. Those are real family stories. <laughs> I'm actually lying. I had nobody climb Everest. Was it a hill, though? Did they just, climb a hill? Just saying. Just saying. But they're family stories, and, and, and here's the thing. Exile is part of our family story, you know? Mm -hmm. It's something that we need to think about, you know? As a man clothed in the covered skin I, I'm in, I'm formed in exile. And I've really been thinking, I've been wondering, what is it like to be formed in exile? To, to, to be formed and shaped as a stranger in a strange land, right? I haven't figured it out yet. I just know it's got something to do with seeing the beauty and suffering. It's part of our story. 
I'm drawn to this, this, this exilic song of, of Psalm 137. It says this, By the rivers of Babylon we sat and we wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of them songs of Zion. This is verse 4. How can we sing the songs of our Lord while in a foreign land? Can we? Can we sing the songs of our Lord while in foreign lands? John Coltrane did, right? What, what, what else is jazz besides the songs of the Lord in foreign lands? The sweep of the narrative that makes up God's story with humanity as seen in the Bible are organized by four very distinct movements of exile whether it's Adam and Eve being prevented from going back into Eden or the Egyptian enslavement or Babylonian captivity or being conquered by the Romans. And something we should take, pay particular attention to, all of those movements, all of those moments of exile were caused by the same exact thing each time. You know what it was? Every moment when the people of God would not choose to live in peace with one another. Every time. So, my thought is, this ideal of exile, feeling like a stranger in a strange land, the, this sense of disconnection and dislocation and fragmentation and isolation that we feel so deeply, of being displaced may just be an attempt of capturing what the human heart is like. Maybe exile is a condition of the human heart, which would make Jesus' beatitudes the way of God's promised restoration, the way of trust, lament, humility, justice, compassion, right motives, peacemaking, surrender, and radical love is our way home. It's our way home. Yeah. We're gonna sing a song that started out as a song about my best girlfriend and turned into a song about the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> mm, like songs do. Yes. Uh, and they have some things in common. Uh, I think they share an intention. I think one of them's living it and the other one has sort of had her intention <laughs> snatched. <laughs> yeah, that's a, good, that's a good way of putting it. Mm -hmm. um, but that intention, this mothering figure holding a light to gather the exile, to gather the weary, to be a place that holds, that creates home. And the thousand ways that we have robbed her of her mm. intention mm. are where this song was born, mm. and it's called Torch. Mm. Mm. All the wrongs that we will carry She is hell-bent and weary She was always quick to cry And hope is swooping circles That she used to be afraid of The shapes that she is made of Well, it happens, they can fly And she don't believe in Jesus Not the way you think she should but it's mercy that she's holding, and she's holding on for good. Ooh, oh, oh. Ooh, oh, oh. Well, she's aching at the edges, yeah, she's breaking at the seams. She has always been a dreamer, but her midnight's closing in. She's a vessel and a healer. Love can pick its poison, 
She is swallowing the noise and she is staying till we win. And she don't believe in Jesus, not the way you think she should. But it's mercy that she's holding and she's holding on. No, she don't believe in Jesus, not the way you think she should. But it's mercy that she's holding and she's holding on. So bring your tired and huddled masses, bring your yearning to breathe free, bring your never was and has beens, bring your desperate liberty. She is mothering the exiles, she is coming home for more, she is holding back the lightning, she is lighting up the shore. Oh, oh, oh. And she don't believe in Jesus, not the way you think she should. And it's mercy that she's holding, and she's holding on. No, she don't believe in Jesus, not the way you think she should. But it's mercy that she's holding, and she's holding on for good. Oh, Yes, yeah, she's holding on for good. Ooh, oh. yeah. Can we talk about peace? <laughs> yeah. Can we talk about peace? Mm -hmm. God's deepest shalom, God's salam, peace is a gift from God, a gift of well-being, of presence, of protection, of wholeness, of belonging. Peace is a gift given to God, to God's people, for God's people to give to the world. And here's the, the blessing Jesus speaks into the deepest part of your being. Blessed are the peacemakers. You were the Makarios. That, that was a blessing that was reserved only for Caesar and the powerful and the prominent and the privileged. But here Jesus is pulling away from the political and religious and, and, and militaristic means to solidify power and prominence, which even then caused way more division than harmony and turns to those who are willing to participate in God's work in the world of making peace. You're the Makarios. You are the blessed if you are makers of peace. I've, uh, I've been busy for the last few uh, years. Um, I, <laughs> the, uh, I've been doing a lot of talks on uh, diversity, access, and inclusion, and I've been doing a lot of spiritual direction for civil rights and human rights warriors. Um, <laughs> the world's misalignment is keeping a brother busy. <laughs> been in it, been in it. And through it all, I'm convinced of this truth. It's hard to work on peace outside of yourself if you haven't done the necessary work of fostering peace within yourself. All right? I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. It's y'all three, yeah. It's hard to work on peace outside of yourself if you haven't done the necessary work of fostering peace within yourself. One of the surest ways to mitigate out violence outside of ourselves is to work with God to mitigate the violence we hold within ourselves, acknowledging our soul wounds. Making sense of the interior violence that those wounds can cause. Y'all been there, haven't you? I mean, I don't have to spend a whole lot of time talking about it, but some of us got some soul wounds where we, we feel like we got to be perfect all the time, and so we all we spend a lot of judgment uh, um, judging ourselves, mm -hmm. right? And all of a sudden, that judgment that is inside of us starts spilling out as judgment outside of us, right? 
I'll just say amen. That's all right. It's real. It's, it's real. So we got to acknowledge those soul wounds, make sense of the interior violence that those wounds can cause. Own the fact that a lot of times that interior violence feels out beyond the, the walls of our being and adds to the world's violence. And then, and then allow God's healing words of truth to mend that soul wound. That God is for us that God is with us, that God has made you not enough, but more than enough. Allowing God's healing words of truth to mend that soul wound which mitigates the interior violence, which mitigates the exterior violence, or at least better equips us to be makers of peace. So I wanna ask you another question, think about this. What is a healing word of truth from God you think someone needs to hear tonight? Whether, whether they're here or, or out there in the world, what's a healing word somebody needs to hear? Can you share one with me, y'all, please? What's, what's a healing word? Forgiveness. Forgiveness, yeah. What else? Acceptance, yes. Belonging. Belovedness, yes. What else? Enoughness, yes. Worthiness. Worthiness. Mm. You're okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Right. Just, just bless somebody with that. You know what? You okay? Mm -hmm. You know? I, I've seen better. I've seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> but you're okay. You're okay. What else? What's the healing word of truth? You will not be left alone. You don't have to do it all yourself. You can bring your belonging with you. There may be more peace than you suspect. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Mm. Maybe it's the call to recovery. Thank you. 
just wanted so much more of that. <laughs> just wanted so much more of that. That was so good. Mm. It's so good. I just felt like we needed to um, kind of iris down to one of the Beatitudes, and I thought this was a, a piece would be a good one these days, right? We need peace. This, this idea of well-being, wholeness. Um, it's not just a cessation of violence, but it's the breaching of the gap between the divine and, and humanity, but between humanity and itself and humanity and God's creation. The ancient rabbi said that peacemaking was one who was willing and able to step in and establish right relationship among people who have developed enough interior peace in themselves and enough credibility and goodwill among people to bring people together. There is a blessedness for those who have the capacity to do that. Later on in Matthew, this is Matthew 10, uh, Jesus talks about this capacity in a very interesting way. He says this, as you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. And if not, let your peace return to you. What Jesus seems to be alluding to is, the, is humanity's capacity to show up with a valued, resting peace. A valued, resting peace. There was, there was a way by spending time in deep intimacy with Jesus Christ that the apostles had the capacity to show up with their peace, to leave from his presence as carriers of peace, leave with a quality of well-being, belonging, safety, and wholeness, leave with a quality of peace that entered the room with them. Which means now, in a time where levels of anxiety and loneliness and isolation and fragmentation and fear are at an all-time high, Jesus has made a way for you, for us, as messy as we are, to be carriers of a valued, resting peace. I, I hate to shout about peace, but I want that. <laughs> I, I need that. I, I, I need that for me. I need that for y'all. I need that for the world. A peace you can enter the room with and a peace you can leave with as you depart. It's a resting peace, a peace that makes up space in rooms, that takes up space in, in, in the room, that impacts the hearts and conditions of people in that space. Anyone interested in a valued resting peace? Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. A peace that can fill empty spaces. Heather Lynn is an um, amazing um, musician and songwriter, and she wrote this uh, amazing piece that uh, I'm going to ask her to share, Letting It Go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.
was our, our simple practice. <laughs> now, okay, so I'm a contemplative, so this is, th this is how we do it. My wife, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, she was like getting rid of it. I mean, she was letting it go. <laughs> I was uh, walking around today, kind of looking for analogies through nature. I was, I was uh, looking for God to to speak to me and um, I was sitting on a porch and I was noticing a tree just shedding its leaves because it wasn't serving them anymore and just releasing. It's our last movement. And I really do, I wanna thank you all for your attention. I wanna thank you all for being present. You have been wonderfully present for us. God bless you and thank you for that. Thank you for being vulnerable and open and willing to breathe with us and co-create with us. It has been a blessing. Before we close, I want to leverage this teaching of Jesus towards some healing. See, the Beatitudes are so powerful. They, they have a way of guiding us forward. It, they, they, they bring a clarity of our past and it roots us in our now. So the question I'll bother you with, this is the last one. <laughs> what could you release that is currently not serving you in your life well? Let's breathe. Let's think about that. What could you release that is currently not serving you or your life well. Because here's the thing, the way of trust is asking you, is your grasping, hoarding, or holding serving you well? The, the, the way of trust is, is asking someone, is your unwarranted distrust serving you well? The way of lament is asking someone, is your avoidance of yours or others suffering? Is it, is it suff serving you well? The way of humility is asking, how's that pride working for you? The way of justice is asking someone tonight, are the moments you turn a blind eye uh, to, to injustice serving you well? The way of compassion is asking, is your moment of apathy serving you well? The way of right motive is asking, is your egoic self-focused drive, is it currently serving you well? The way of peace is asking someone, is the chaos serving you well? The way of surrender is asking, is the stand you are making that you are refusing to move or budge from serving you well? And the way of radical love is asking, is avoiding the cost connected with deep intimacy with God and others serving you well. What could you release that is currently not serving you or your life well?
when the teacher saw the crowd. He went up on the mountainside and sat down and he began to teach. He said, blessed are the poor, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger for justice, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemaker, the persecuted, and blessed, and blessed are you. We love you. We thank you. We'll do one more song. We didn't plan to do this, but our, our dear folks in the UK who couldn't be here tonight would have loved to have heard this song. It's off the brand new record, so I think we'll do our version so they can hear this. Yeah. Oh, River.
Thank you. God bless you and keep you.